We will now begin to look at Garnier's hierarchy of learning and look at all the eight stages. Beginning with stage one, the first level is signal learning. It is completely behavioral and it the basis of classical conditioning, which means individuals, young people, students respond to a signal. They have to be trained what a signal means and what they are required to do. So this is very similar to what Pavlov was trying to do also. This is learning by association. You associate a signal with what you have to do. So in a classroom, in a noisy classroom, for example, the teacher stops talking suddenly. The teacher's voice cannot be heard and the students wonder what has happened to the teacher and silence sets in. The signal was quietness. The signal was the teacher's voice will not be heard. So similar things teachers can do in order to signal what students need to do in classes instead of having to repeat directions again and again and again. This helps set classroom routines. Things that happen normally on a regular basis in a classroom is a routine. Students come into a classroom, they are seated, they must take the materials out. They don't have to be told all this every day, every class period. The teacher should have some signal that the students know what they are to do to be ready for the class. Whether it's a lecture, whether it's a discussion, whether it's group work, whatever the class may be, but the students have to be ready. So this is partly classical conditioning, partly what Pavlov said, and is learning through association. Associating signals for a particular action to be conducted by the students. Now, when a signal goes and the teacher has to repeat the directions, then the student hasn't made that association yet. The student should not need verbal directions from the teacher if the association has been made between the signal and what the student has to do. And therefore, the teacher may need to repeat the signal and help students learn what the signal means and signifies till such time that the student understands without any verbal input or directions from the teacher what to do when the signal goes. The second stage is a stimulus response stage, also behavioral, makes you do something, and this is operant conditioning with the works of Skinner. So this is in collaboration with Skinner's understanding of conditioning where a response is given to a stimulus. In other words, it is learning through reinforcement. Because your behavior is reinforced, because you get a reward, because something good happens to you, the behavior continues. So you behave appropriately in response to the reinforcement. That is why this type of learning is called learning through reinforcement. So for teachers and even for parents, reinforcing young people is critical, is important. And reinforcing them positively through rewards is better. At times, you may need to reinforce negatively. There is negative reinforcement where something not so happy, something not so good, something that the student or child doesn't like is taken away, which is seen as good by the child. If you were going to reduce the child's pocket money for misbehavior and you don't because the child now behaves, you give him the full amount that is negative reinforcement. You withheld a negative response so the child perceives it as good and will continue to behave. So reinforcements are critical in education. They are important at home, but they are critical in school and classrooms because teachers can use positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement to help students learn appropriate behaviors. So stages one and two 
of Ghani's hierarchy of learning, both completely behavioral, deal with behaviors, ways in which students act or behave in the classroom. 